Next up is also a face-to-face -face session on what the client wants. This session will have one of India's top media agency executives explaining what are the tough questions marketers ask when it comes to digital video. For this, I would like to invite Mr. Shashi Sinha, CEO, IPG Media Brands India. Let's welcome him, please. And to moderate this and get the conversation going, Ms. Janine Stein, Editorial Director, Content Asia. Um, there's one question that is a holdover from the previous session. And before we start talking about what consumers and what your marketers really want, which platform gives more granular data at the moment, TV or digital? So, from a, a point of view of independent, verified, third-party data, it's TV. So, TV is still a better buy for... It's because it's independent, third-party, verified. Okay. So, uh, that's why it is. And that's why it's a more, it's a premium, it's more expensive, which is... Many reasons, but that's one of the reasons. Why. Would you like to see more transparency in digital? Absolutely. Okay, that's a green answer. So I must, I must do a disclaimer, which you may, may not know. Uh, I didn't know Path was ahead of me. Uh, we are partners in crime. We probably spend more time. Uh, so some of my answers are going to be colored by that. We, we spend probably more time together than I do with my colleagues. Uh, other than yesterday, I think for about five, six hours, and maybe earlier. So I think uh, that's the slimmer. So if, before we move into a couple of questions, I want to, because measurement is one of the things which clients ask for. And a couple of things I want to answer on his behalf, which he skirted. You know, the way we played, we played very well. It's a good Martin Jeff act. So he's the corporate uh, executive. He runs the independent. Path uh, of your permission, I'm. Uh, so, you know, he runs the, uh, the, the body and yeah. he has a job to do managing all stakeholders. I have this great uh, advantage of being outside, yet being inside. So, you can get away by saying a lot, which he can't. So, you asked a question on the carrot and the stick. So, uh, so he's the carrot. He's a nice guy, he's a sweet guy, you know, he's, <laughs> he builds the consensus and you know where the stick is. You know, so, so it also happens that companies like Group M and us throughput a lot of uh, money on uh, content. So I think uh, the middle ground and consensus building which you spoke about uh, is done through this characteristic which you very correctly pointed out and which is why I'm very hopeful that digital measurement or ECOM will take off sooner than later. So you're backing it 100%? Oh, we're backing it more than 100%. You know. Do you think it's possible? We think it's not only really possible, it's imminent and uh, I think every stakeholder wants it. So including the big boys with the wall gardens also want it and uh, uh, it'll happen. Uh, so I was listening and I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 you can't Because, you know, from clients today, and, and, and I mean, set the context, so if I wear the hat of what my clients want, so while we'll come to the other stuff, one of the biggest things is measurement, you know, and especially with what's happening all over the world on digital, with the big boys, with the big platforms, there is a scope for a lot of youngsters sitting here, in their platforms and their content doing well. So I think measurement really is the cornerstone. And uh, I think what, uh, Patho and his team at Bach have done is it's a joint industry body. It's unique that nowhere else it exists in the world like this. So there are many jigs in the world, but this is a jig which runs it end to end. You know, we have gone and studied, so and I'm speaking on their behalf. So they they run it, and there is a fair degree of transparency. There'll be pulls and pressures of any kind. Obviously, when someone when someone loses, there'll be pressure, but there's absolute transparency. People understand that. So I think uh, over the last three years, he's been running it now. Uh, the digital guys also realize there's merit in this, and which is why you'll be surprised. I don't want to take names because I don't want to preempt anything. But some of the biggest boys whom you, in your mind, apprehensive, are pushing us to say start. It's just about getting common uh, framework and ground, you know. So, so it's. So will, will this, we, we heard quite a lot yesterday about the big guys taking 85 or 86%, everyone else sharing. Some headlines around the world have said game over for everyone else. Do you think um, initiatives like ACAM will change this game over kind of mindset? So the best content will win. Whatever platform it is on, it is the content which is going to finally win. Right, right. 
and uh, it's happening on television today we see it it's the best content we, which wins finally you know so it's finally programs it's not really uh, uh, the platform on which it is and i see the same thing happening here whether uh, the big boys can aggregate terrific content or whether it is reside somewhere else on a different platform or stand alone we don't know where it will play out but finally viewers watch content and uh, advertisers chase uh, advertising on content and which is what's going to be for, so for, for you uh, from your perspective have um, tv people been as successful as the online players in aggregating audiences in providing eyeballs instead of just generic information oh they do a great job uh, some of the stuff which he's doing in the return path will obviously uh, take it to, to a next level but he, even now there's a fair degree of uh, data which comes so not only is as you said at aggregate level but uh, the stuff which he provides uh, and which allows you to analyze content you know in a far better way on the tv measurement uh, there uh, and same thing will come on content measurement i patho didn't talk about it but ekam is both uh, digital ad ratings as well as digital content ratings so in a manner of speaking you'll get both going together and that 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 footprint is already in place in television so uh, so people are uh, using it some better than others so a lot of small genres so to speak niche genres which is akin to what digital is i mean digital probably be niche than that a lot of them are using uh, that stuff uh, like i said some do it better than others um when we talk about is there so measurement is the big thing that your clients want what else do they want yeah. so i i'm not tempted i mean i thought of thing when i saw partho here and i didn't know we were back to back and uh, no, i no, thought but it, i think it was designed so, you were designed to uh, so be I back to back realize, my apologies i didn't realize that i thought I, he had enough of me yesterday but then again uh, there <laughs> so uh, as you said you're very really best friends so uh, i say that he has to agree to that <laughs> so but uh, jokes no, apart no he said he was going to stay for your session so yeah, the so, i think the feelings mutual yeah, yeah. so so uh, no he's so good he came for the prints over yesterday i was very impressed to see him they were doing the print i have this knack i don't know why of getting into all measurement uh, you know i find myself the bit of any controversy yesterday doing the print uh, readership right, survey right, after right, four right. years or three years or whatever and i saw partho sitting there so i said why well, partho what are you doing here? he said no I, you know so it's good so we, we really work well so coming back to your question uh, you know so measurement is a very big thing and you know and digital people realize at one point in time people used to say digital is all about measurement now they realize with all the problems which are happening with this viewability or brand safety that you need third party independent uh, measurement in place so i think that's one big challenge there are a couple of other challenges especially with digital video there you know so a lot of clients they used to making uh, so far the whole psyche was uh, video for tv so tv content you know they would make tv ads and all and suddenly Uh, one video or digital video is dramatically different, you know. So of course, it starts with the uh, client spend a disproportionate amount of energy in designing content and uh, to find talent with their use to because they're used to aggregating uh, one large agency coming and doing all the content work and not they're not used to getting five guys to do this stuff. And the way digital content and digital video plays out is that you need multiple. uh contact points you need multiple stories you know the storytelling is dramatically different so that i think a lot of clients have not understood and those who understood don't have the wherewithal to make it happen so i won't name the client but one of my largest clients a handle company one of the largest in the country uh, said to me you know uh, we walked up to him because we run a large full scale agency which also so to speak talks of uh, digital content capabilities and say listen can you do 200 pieces of video for me in a year now that's hell of a lot i mean we fell down and it's at this price so i think somewhere uh, in their mind if one tv film in a campaign or six films in a year is one side 200 pieces of video is the other side they've not understood what the role of uh, you know video is how it changes the consumer journey cycle and stuff like that and once that understanding comes so some of them have then the issue is that do we this the this our industry have the wherewithal to aggregate that so obviously we are not going to do it ourselves we'll get to the young people sitting there but how do we aggregate so that's one big challenge in terms of understanding capability and uh, ramping up the capability of people who in the ecosystem who thought of it one way so it's measurements and insights and and um capability. solutions from you yeah yeah um does your biggest challenge in 
creating a role for agencies? Because a lot has been made in going direct to the consumer, and I think a lot of the TV people are trying to, I don't know, go direct, do whatever they can with influencers. Does the, how, how has your role as an agency changed? So, if I may say so, media agencies are very well placed. You know, if I was a creative agency, I'd be very worried uh, because creative agencies traditionally have grown up one way. We, we, you know, and I again give an example of a large global beverage client of ours where we use the connection planning process, you know, so we are at the apex where we decide exactly what I said earlier, the consumer journey and what, at what stage, what interventions to make for the consumer journey. So I think, uh, and we, we, because of our scale, thankfully, we're investing in researchers to figure out how a consumer reacts. So, so therefore, a lot of clients today, and I'm not saying it because uh, I'm a media agency, I generally believe this, a lot of clients are turning around and saying to us that you be at the Apex role. A lot of mature clients saying, you know, conventionally media was right at the tail. Right. But today it's turning around. So, uh, and then once you get the front seat on the window, then you always have the advantage of figuring out what happens and, you know, and we have no access to grant because I don't have a content team. So we say, listen, whatever the best available in the market for that uh, situation, what do we get in, we plug in there. So we are natural aggregators. So digital video is all about, you know, that there is capability in the room there and you need someone as a platform to aggregate. So it's a stupid statement to make, but think of us as the interface between clients as an aggregator. So in a way, I'd like to believe we are very well poised for this ecosystem. From what, from what you've said, there's a, this, the, the way you approach the market and the way you deal with your clients and you create that ecosystem is a huge advantage for digital publishers and digital content creators. Would that be correct? It is. It is absolutely. So this market, from a content point of view, is going to be fragmented. Keep the right. platforms aside. Right. And obviously, it will be very uh, good for the ecosystem, that side and our side, that couple of us, three, four of us, you know, rightly or wrongly, uh, the Indian media agency business, which I'm sure you know, uh, unfortunately, let's say it for reasons which I'll come to later, that almost 70-80% of the volumes go through uh, 10 players or 12 players or whatever, you know. So it's very aggregated on our side and the digital content and video business is uh, disaggregated, you know. So in a way, this, we have a good interface for our clients in that sense. And the truth is that, well, India, the SME market is not opened up. Finally, all advertising, all, all forms of advertising come from the top 300, 400 clients. So it's not that like China where SMEs were contributing a lot to one medium or whatever, you know. It's all, unfortunately for the country, but it's all coming from those. So, so we are in the middle of it. So I think we are very well positioned for that, for, to ensure that this, this ecosystem grows. What, what, how do you view, I know you talked about content creation, edit creating, how do you view content marketing and what do you think is the biggest challenge in clients understanding content marketing versus advertising? So I think uh, 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 advertising is a bit linear. Uh, here, what's, what are the triggers to press at what stage of the uh, consumer journey? That's a bit, uh, that's the first hurdle and the challenge. I must say, a lot of evolved clients get that. You know, okay. that's not, uh, they get that. It's not a, that's know. not a big issue. So, for a lot them. of evolved clients get that, you know. After having said that, I think in this country, the problem is the execution. So, the volumes are huge. You know, you need uh, the different markets, the different geographies. You know, in TVCs, it's very simple. You do a language dub and go on. In this case, the sensibilities are different. You know, so, so I think the, the, if I may say so, so while there are some clients who are not there on the learning curve, but a lot of clients who are there, the example I gave you, the handset client earlier, the problem is the execution. They're so caught up in so much, uh, you know. And some clients, unfortunately, also get caught up because they have disaggregated their end. So there are multiple people, there are specialist digital teams, you know, and within the digital teams, there are different people doing different roles. So, so it's more a structure issue and a lack of execution, you know. Is that what you were talking about when you said it's all very well to look into the future and to be really um, have stars in your eyes about AI and machine learning? There's actually basic structural things absolutely, about the industry absolutely. that need. So when you're talking, yes, you're absolutely right. You know, today a lot of people come and talk to us data and, uh, you know, they do a lot of stuff and uh, there's capability and the investment we'll make. End of the day, it's getting the basics right and making it happen, you know, and that's the story. So today. what would you say the three basics that people need to get right? So I think from uh, our client side, uh, Success has to come. So finally, it's all about uh, success in their metrics. And uh, so one is, the, of course, the education where education doesn't exist, which, which I think is not a big problem because in the, in the desire to catch up and ramp up, things will happen. 
I think it's making things happen. I mean, I, I personally am a big believer, as my friend Partho will uh, say. Finally, uh, life is not about, uh, you know, uh, finding the next, uh, you know, whatever, the big discovery you will make. The yeah. life is in the details and the execution, I and mean, that's a differentiator if you can make things happen. And digital video is all about that. Day-to-day -day lessons? Yeah. What about data and analytics? Are, how are you approaching? Obviously, there's a there's as we were speaking in this in the uh, session before, people have more data than they know what to do yeah. with. What is the challenge for you in interpreting the data and in making sense of it? So the how have you had basically how have you had to change your business and your mindset? So uh, data is two things. You know, firstly, truly speaking, well, all of us claim we have data, but my my feeling is that you need specialists, and the industry is not attracting specialist talent for data. You know, that talent is lying outside and they're all into a different game altogether. So, so let me admit, I don't think our industry, the media agency business, has quality data people, in spite of what we put out. We're very good at putting out what we believe is the right thing to say, yeah. rather than actually doing it, you know. So I think that's one problem. Uh, the second problem is the way, it's a larger problem of the data in this country, that uh, there is so much, no one knows what to do with it. There is issues of privacy. I don't think privacy has been addressed here. So there are many, many uh, challenges which you face, and we don't know how to serve that data. So, you know, so I run a small CRM team uh, where we actually do end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, actual selling of especially cars like Auto and all we're doing for a lot of international brands. So finally, the data comes to the funnel. That's not a problem. The problem is how do you convert it? And what most people forget, there are soft skills required for data. So when you're converting data to finally application, there is a huge amount of soft skill required for how will all the data translate, which, you know, is for data scientists become very difficult, they're very left-brained. So you need those skills which are important. Where are the skills? I mean, they don't, if they don't exist, do they exist somewhere so else? Where are you people, finding there'll them? There'll be finally CRM marketing people, people who've been trained in marketing, people who understand CRM, you know. There are a lot of marketeers who are shifting uh, durable companies in this way who are coming into our business. Now for there, the other problem is we have to get the environment ready for them because, you know, our, finally at one level, it's intellectual business, our business. It also is a service industry. And sometimes the two, the two can uh, collide. The two don't match, you know. So you need intellectual people require a certain culture and a habitat to stay in. And the service industry requires a different kind of a culture. So why do you have a time frame? Why this talent gap exists that holds the industry back? So that I am not sure the talent gap can be covered very easily. Uh, it's also linked to compensation, you know. Uh, so clients are, I mean, uh, again, one of India's largest advertisers, I'm sorry I keep going back to my friend there, one of India's largest, perhaps the second largest advertiser was with him and me yesterday. And uh, there's some cutting edge stuff around data and segmentation, which without going too much of detail, uh, we were deliberating. And uh, there was a number he put up in terms of a fee, and I said to myself, I have a 40-member team working, and that's the kind of fee I get for that. And that's the, you know, so that's the mindset. The same client deals with me and says, listen, what are the value you're providing to me? So I know you've got some tools and you some segmentation you do and all the stuff you do, but this is what it is. The same thing we comes to industry body, which is exclusive, something which is turned out as a proprietary with the uh, joint IP. Listen, I'm going to pay. So the same client, so it's easy to say that we have to add value, but it's difficult. Partho can add value, we can't. <laughs> um, you also, you also See, said the point is what has happened to most of us, what we say, that our psychology is all about volumes. Yeah. End of the day, this media agency business in India and all over the world, and you know between the lines what I'm trying to say, is end of the day is all about volume. So we, and I'm known to speak, the way it comes. So we speak, our speak is quality data, but our job is volumes. That's the contradiction. <laughs> well, thank sorry, you for being honest. Those who know me, know me, I say it as it comes. I think there's an acknowledgement that that's true, but there is, there, you, you're obviously working towards a place where you can speak all three. You can. Uh, but then it's, uh, it's uh, something has to give. So, so yes, I mean, if, if you're a prospective client, I'd show up and show all the kind of great stuff you're doing on data and analytics and uh, CRM and all that we do. You know, you'll be impressed. That's why those two car companies are giving me those CRM projects, large international brands. But truly speaking, it's not what, uh, you know, so if I was a pristine, just like the content guy sitting there, the digital guy sitting there, they do what they do, I can never do that, you know. They can never do what we do. 
So there's an era of specializing. What do people say? Generalization, integration, finally. How to bring it together? There's a challenge. But there will be special skills. Got it. Um, we've heard a lot yesterday and, and a little bit today about people will pay in India. They, there's a lot that they will pay for, and in fact, that they are I paying. I saw it live yesterday. I'm just telling you. They just want value. That's, that's the tricky one. Something which he has, his IP or something which, you know, which no one else can have. That's there. He's laughing. I she's, she's, we're 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 friends, don't worry, we're <laughs> friends. We can pull each other's leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't, we don't have guns, knives, or anything, sharp objects around us. Um, we talked again about, we're talking about advertising, short form and digital. There's also a lot of brand integration and a lot of product placement yeah. in long form quality. We had um, the founder of Contilo talking this morning about, he's not focusing on advertising at all, but increasingly, in ch from China to the US to everybody, there is a lot of product placement. Are you seeing that um, that sector of the market increase for you, where, whereas as the, premium as the premium content explodes, that's more of an opportunity for, for your clients to get involved in the creation of long-form premium? A lot of it is happening. Uh, okay. A lot of it has been happening before. Uh, you know, India is one of the most thriving entertainment industries, the Bollywood and yeah. the languages. So, so it's been happening for a long, long time. I mean, this market is very used to it, and I'm sure everyone here knows that. Uh, and they, again, no one knows how to value it right. So, you know, we have done enough pilots to say whether the ratio should be 1 to 7. You know, this is, by the way, one of the cheapest television markets in the world. Yeah. And I don't know how many of the audience knows this here. If you do uh, cost per thousand uh, in purchasing power parities compared to most of the markets in the world, it's the cheapest, primarily because the government allowed in the 90s anyone to come in. And there's, what, 850 plus television stations, you know. Yeah. And supply is always bigger than demand, you know. So as a result, the CPTs are very low uh, in this market. And once that depress, depressed, it depresses everything. So it depresses, and that's why a lot of our digital content guys will be suffering because, you know, that's since the benchmark. Yeah. So one of the big problems in this market is that it's such a supply-driven market yeah. that, you know, which is there. And so, so too on the premium quality. So if you're doing premium quality, you know, I have a client, I mean, a large cooperative, we do a lot of, almost 40% of the stuff they put on value adds in premium quality, what you call premium quality, mm -hmm. Amul, which is a large cooperative. Small budget, big money they put in that. Uh, and I, and they believe in it, but they say justify to us. Why should I put a 1 is to 7 ratio from a, you know, a vanilla buy to whatever entertainment it is? So, again, excuse me, again, the, the issue is not of availability because this country is always uh, historical reasons, our culture, society, our entertainment industry, everything put together. The content is available. We believe in content, long, short, long content, short, whatever format it is. The issue is the value. That's the bane of this industry here. Can so. you fix that? He gets measurement going, we'll fix he the rest. Can, what is your contribution so you. to the so, fixing? <laughs> so our contribution is that, uh, genuinely believe, personally, you know, and this is what I said, there's a day job and there is a thing. So as we speak, some of my uh, kids outside will tell a client, I'll get you better rates than what you're getting. But I genuinely believe that uh, if we don't, and we are, we are moving in the direction of the industry, some of it cannot be, like he said, some of it cannot speak. But five, six of us sitting together and saying, guys, how long will this go on? Can't we, uh, so without using strong words like, are you tipping this? Cartelization. But somewhere saying, listen, we need to do something for this industry. So before we right. go, you know. So, and that can only come. You just can't tomorrow gang up and say, listen, these are the rates. You can't do that. You have to say, listen, this is the extra being added there. This is what we are adding. But needless to mention, I mean, all these content, again, I'm sorry, I mean, we've, I see it as it comes all the time. All this is meaningless because this country, and media is extremely under leveraged, you know. So, and because television is low, so is digital, so is everything is low. So, till that takes come the, on the monetary side, yeah. So, unless you take the table up, and the table can either go up as demand is more than supply, which may not happen in a hurry uh, because supply is uh, very strong, or you start showing value. So, value can be shown two ways. Either you start doing a lot of uh, tests, which you do small, small pilots to say, like I give you the Amul example. We go back to them and say, listen, we have convinced them through input tests that mm -hmm. the ratio should be 1 to 7, mm -hmm. through output tests, output metrics of mm -hmm. their performance, their brand scores, to okay. say, listen, this works, where a brand, which is, which is a small spender, a big company, a small spender, 
they do almost about 30 percent of their yeah, exactly. uh, spends on value yeah. so that's one way of doing it there are five other ways of doing it but by and large it's still a it's a, still a value conscious market do you see that changing hoping and praying hoping and praying and hoping. taking some baby steps which i've hinted i will not talk more well the hoping and praying we have 49 seconds um and i want to ask my yes or no do you believe that in the next, and I'm, I'm putting a 12 months, but maybe it could be 36 months, um, the value of what you're getting, you'll get more money from, from digital as a result of efforts from Bark and IPG and others. Do you think you'll be getting more money? Well, there's a general optimism. I think Venice is the pessimist. On that optimistic note, I thank you very, very much for joining us and thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Sinha. As you were having your conversation, we have a moment that we've captured that we'd like to hand over to you. And we also have a small token of appreciation. Thank you so much for joining us here.